weekend, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Le sacrifice que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo. Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats du Sport à Radio-Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fedler. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'année U-Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sport. Et par Mikasa, l'étoile menton du volleyball. Le V200W, ballon officiel de U Sport. And by Mikasa, maker of volleyball's hottest star, the V200W, official volleyball of U Sports. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to the Athletic and Recreation Center here at the University of Queens. This is the 2024 U-Sports Men's Volleyball National Championships presented by Mikasa here on CBC Sports. My name is Everett DeLorme. This is Ben Plazoda, and Ben, we are in for a fantastic final day here of the 2024 U-Sports Men's Volleyball National Championships. We've got three games, fantastic games coming up. And first and foremost, we have the fifth-place match between the defending national champion, Trinity Western Spartans playing for fifth this time around against the uh, silver medalist from the RSEQ, the Laval Rouge All. Yeah, we're in for an exciting match. Like you said, we're finally here. It's Saturday. This is where everyone wanted to be this final day. Uh, here you see the regular season uh, records here, the head-to-head -head matchup between Laval and Trinity Western. Uh, Trinity actually came into this tournament the higher seed between these two, uh, but Laval has shown their worth, especially in their uh, convincing 3 0 win in the Constellation semifinal over McMaster. And Trinity Western had a little bit harder path to get here, actually, uh, two five set matches, unfortunately, dropping their quarterfinal match to Queens, our host school, and then uh, having to pull one out of the fire a little bit against Guelph last night, who had an excellent match. Uh, but Trinity did come out the victors in five. Yeah, the Guelph Griff Griffins proved me wrong and showed everyone that they were, they were uh, more than up to the task at the end of the night. The Spartans were able to, to take it home, but I'm really excited for this one, Ben. This is two quality teams. I've said it before. These are two teams who ex usually expect to be in the semifinal side, the championship side. They used to be playing a little bit later on the day uh, on, on Sunday. So we have two quality teams going head-to-head -head here, two teams who have a lot of pride, um, especially on, on the Rouge All side. When you don't have your best player for that opening match, it's, it's really tough. You don't feel like you're able to put your best foot forward. So they're really out here to prove that they're amongst the elite. And in speaking to head coach Adam Schreimer yesterday before the match, he says, when any time we get to put TW, uh, ch uh, TWU across our chest, we have an opportunity to represent our school. Yeah, and there we see our key player matchup between, uh, you just mentioned Everett and Nicolas Forte, who did not play in the quarterfinal match. But he's back and excited to see what he can do here. And we will be right back after the playing of the national anthems. Mark Hees here, president of Canuck Stuff. We've been standing behind our overkill clothing and supporting athletes for over 30 years. We're pumped 
to be part of this year's U Sports National Championships. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca for profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline, immersing you in the game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. And welcome back here to the Athletic and Recreation Center at Queen's University for the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championships in the fifth place match. Everett Dorm and Ben Pozzotto, we are about to get underway and looking at a few of the key players in this matchup here, Henry Rempel and Nikita Fortin. Yeah, Rempel and Fortin, two key, key players for both of these teams. Fortin unfortunately missed their quarterfinal matchup. He was under the weather, but came back to lead his team in kills. Again, 3 nothing win over McMaster. Uh, 12 kids, kills, Max Lose also adding in 9 kills, and St. Don Bay and 29 assists. And on the other side, we see Henry Rempel led his team in kills uh, per attempt this year. Um, but also, not to be shown away, is Caden Schmidt with 22 kills in that uh, consolation semifinal matchup, which really pushed Trinity Western over the Guelph Griffins 3 2. Absolutely, and we are just in the process here of announcing the starting lineup. So, starting for the Trinity Western Spartans, it's much of the same we've seen all tournament long. Caden Schmidt and Pierce DeGrief on the left side. In the middle, we have Corey Shonaher and Jackson Corneal. And on the right side, Henry Rempel, of course, the All Canadian, with um, Ansel Ryan dishing the rock, Aaron Elser and um, Roxborough as the libero, Taylor Roxborough as the libero. On the other side for the Rouge Yaw, it's going to be Charles saint aubain dishing the rock with Nicolas Fontaine on the right side, Max Dozier and uh, um, Patrick Minville on the left side, Jonathan Adzi and Jonathan uh, Giraud down the middle with William Bergeron playing in libero. Should be a fun matchup here. Ever both teams. This this is the last game of their season. Win or lose, they this is the last game for both teams. So don't be surprised if we see both of these teams try to leave everything on the floor. They've come all this way. They don't want maybe it's not the medal or the place they were hoping to finish, but it's always nice to end your season on a win and not having the taste of that loss for the whole next year, having a way to get back to this point. So both of these teams are gonna look to come out firing here early in the first set. Yeah, absolutely. As we get going, it will be Patrick Minville at the baseline to get us going from the Rouge Off. Silver medalist from the Canada West taking on the silver medalist from the RSEQ, and we are underway. Aaron Elsa to take that first ball. Goes right outside to Piers de Grief, and he goes through the seam. 
first point, Spartans. Great fast run to the outside there to get the grief started early. Uh, the lone first year on this Trinity Western team and pretty impressive for him to crack this roster in his first year. Not very many Spartans come in and start in their first year. St. Aubain. Sea ball to Fontaine and he squeezes that one through off the block. And there it is. Right away, Laval wants to get Fortin involved, and they're able to do that with the sea ball. Great run out of the back row by Fortin. You know, for a lot of these guys on Laval, this is this is going to be some of their last volleyball they ever play. But they're looking to go out on an all-time high. As that D. Pierce to Grief on the right side is dug in the back row, one-handed by Minvid. In system now are the Spartans to set it up for Corneal. Dug nicely by Lozier. He'll get it back on the left side. Oh, and what a snipe on the back corner. Max Lozier. What a great play by Lozier. Getting low to handle that ball off the block. Pick it up and then no approach and just take a rip at it. Hard cross court. Adi now back to serve. Jonathan Z going at Aaron Elser. Pass to the attack line. Corneal on the 31 is long. Just a hair at the back there. Good attempt, though. You know, I really think that Trinity Western's been such an error-prone team all tournament long. We've seen the best versions of Trinity Western when they're serving tough. That has to be their key to matchup because that this, these offensive miscues are going to be happening. They have such a high-powered offense that... They're going to need to make up some other points on their serve. Outside to Rempel, his first swing of the game goes down the line. Falte first said it was out, but nicely caught by our lines person as Falte agrees. Yeah, yeah rubbing by Rempel. Rempel with a great job painting the line there. Great turn of the shoulders to send that one home. The grief, his serve goes long. And again there, Everett, you just talked about having to limit errors, especially on the service line, and take advantage of if you're going to have a high-powered offense and make some swinging errors, you're going to really have to be perfect on the service line. Let's see if Trinity can clean it up. N not only perfect, but they also need to put on some pressure, just like Charles saint Aubain did. What an ace by the Rougeal, and they are out to a quick lead here, 5-2 early. Yeah. Uh, sorry, St. Oban has just been awesome for them. He does a little bit of everything for them. Great defensive, especially for a setter. Good, good all-around volleyball player as Aaron Elser handles that one a little bit better. Caden Schmidt to the outside, makes no mistake. And he picks up right where he left off yesterday. Yesterday, leading his team with 22 kills. Quick to find the court there early in this first set. Yeah, Caden Schmidt heating up in the fourth and fifth set is really what helped Trinity Western overcome wealth. Remember, they were down by four at one point, 12-8, and down 2-1, and able to pull it all the way back as Girard paint, paints that one over. Yeah, just hits the tape and trip goes over there. Point goes Laval away. Just a little, just a little paintbrush. See here on the replay. That's that's a, this is this is another thing since you've been gone, Ben. We've got instant replays. Love it. Not, not fully instant, but pretty damn good. The team of Queens is here is doing a fantastic job as Lozier puts it into the net. One thing Laval does so well is their defensive setup in the back row. Not only are they a high-powered offense, but great defensively. Oh, and there's the ace from Henry Rempel. And just like that, from 5-2 to 6-5, a nice little run here by the Spartans. Yeah, and no surprise, if Rempel can get going from the service line, it's a little bit scary if I'm Laval. Two aces yesterday, one here today. Rempel is one of those old, old, older classmen, and he's in his fourth year of eligibility. Technically, you do have five. I'm not entirely sure what his intentions are, but this could very well be his last game in a truly Western Spartans jersey. I hope he has the intention to go to the next level because he definitely has the ability and can make an impact on quite a few teams in Europe. 100%. Jiha going at Aaron Elser. That's a perfect pass. Ryan in system to Caden Schmidt. No doubt. Great angle there by Schmidt. Just leaving that set a little bit inside so he can work himself around the big middle block of Adi.
Schmidt. From the baseline, going at Minvin, that'll be high. And to the sideline, Lozier is just gonna chip it over, handled by Schmidt. Chance here for the Spartans. And Rempo puts it away, we're all tied up at seven. Just like that, that three point lead just disappeared. No surprise, this Trinity Western team, so balanced, such a high power offense. They can dig themselves out of any hole, and we saw that yesterday in their semifinal match as well. They're exuding a much calmer confidence today than we've seen from them, especially, especially yesterday. And Schmidt drops a bomb that'll come all the way back. Here's the chance for the Spartans to take the lead. He gets it back in the pipe. Oh, it's dug up by Roxborough. Rempel is just going to put it over after a miscommunication. Now, oh, St. Aubain, that save there by Rempel. Schmidt just puts it up. Pierce de Grief comes in. He gets dug but kept alive by Shonaher. That falls outside. Point Laval. And that didn't go the Trinity Western way, but they uh, a couple great defensive sets there. Pancake by the Libero. Another good dig out of the back row by Rempel as well. So right now they are firing on all cylinders. And Fortin back at the baseline goes at Schmidt. Ryan all the way to the other side to the grief. He had to speed that up to get it from the recycle. Now in the middle, Sean Herr, and that's long. Laval regains a two-point lead. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's two misses out of the middle now for Trinity. They're going to look to establish that. Don't be surprised if those two middles can clean that up and start finding the court here soon. Offensively, Sean Herr has, has struggled this weekend. I think his blocking has been really strong, especially in the Queens game. But his offense ha hasn't quite been there. So you know what? He fits in perfectly with the rest of the Canadian middles in our system. All blocking, no offense. And he is going to go back to serve here. Let's see if he can make up for that on the service line. Sean Herr handled easily by Balgeron. Outside now, Minville, and that's a rare Patrick Minville kill. Heads up shot by Minville, though. Just a little, he almost looked like he floated in the air for the second to hold on and really turn oh, that ball that, down, the, down line. the line. Perfect. And you could see how stoked his, his team got. They know, he knows his role real well. It's passing and it's defense and it's doing all the little things well. But if he can chip in offensively, that's even better for the Gougea. Oh, Ansel Ryan, that was tricky. Heads up play there by Ryan. Just saw the opening. Quick peek over his shoulder and finds that pit. Ryan, his serving last night was a game changer and oh, that is just, just long. Back to serve here. Tough little float serve he has. Well, that's a not great pass there by Schmidt, and that's a tight pass by Elser. Ryan to Rempel, and the Spartans able to dig themselves up a slight hole on that play. Yeah, I got to give a big shout out to Ryan there. Tough ball. He's fully facing the net. He's able to send that out to the left side with a little bit of pace. Heads up play by the setter of Trinity Western. Oh, he must have watched The Art of Coaching with Austin Campion-Smith. As the grief goes back. Right side now to Falte. Dug by DeGrief. Chased down by Roxborough. Kept alive by the Spartans. Sent back over. Now here's Belgeron. Three options for St. Aubin. Outside, Lozier chisels the block. Awesome swing by the Logier there, really looking to turn and take that one off the hands, and he's able to take advantage of a one-on-one -on -one matchup there with Rumpel. And St. Aubin again. Caden Schmidt rolls that one over, thrown back. Another point for the Wuzial, and they increase their lead once again to 13. Yeah, awesome close on the middle block there by Jonathan Girard. Excellent job getting all the way over, turning those hands back and sending it down on the Trinity Western side. St. Aubin. And Laval has seemed pretty comfortable in these early goings as Rempel's just going to roll that over. It's kept alive. A joust at the net. And now here's Schmidt. 
Dug by Belgenon, tracked out by Minville. Free ball sent over here by the Rougeyard. Now a chance for the Spartans. Right side, Rempel, one-on-one, -on -one, he puts it away. Love that, you've talked about it all weekend. I've heard that two to two shot, a hard cross court. Able to find, find a point there for the Spartans. Now down two, midway through this first set. Yeah, with that one on one, Max Lozier not being the biggest blocker. Interesting. Outside to Fultain, he'll roll it over. Ryan is right there. De Grief now. Outside to Rempel, high off the block, picked up by Minville. Now on the 31 to Zhigong, and he throws that one down. Great run there in the middle. Gerard really making his presence felt. Big stuff block a couple points ago, and there gets the kill for Laval as they restore that three-point lead that they've sort of hung on to for the majority of this set. Yeah, they've done a really good job at put, pushing away the advances of Trinity Western and playing their own game as Lozzi goes after DeGrief. Now, to the pipe, he'll get it back and put it at home. Awesome, awesome run there by DeGrief out of the back row. Just the speed that they come with is, is next to none. Trinity Western, typically one of the best teams, probably in North America, in the way they run that pipe. And Lozier out of the back row, and that will be into the first row of the stands. Calm, cool, collected as Laval so far. Yeah, you see that they, you see the maturity of Laval, right? A lot of these guys have been in big games and been in positions where they've had the pressure on them, and they're used to it at this point. been a very very clean first set here on uh, from one of these teams not many errors as Shawnaher catches the shoulder of St. Aubain and checks to see if he's okay right afterwards yeah great run in there in the middle getting Shawnaher involved getting those middles involved that's really going to open up the pins for this Trinity Western team and and we know that's where their bread and butter is is on the outside of the court for their offense Schmidt that's a big serve, and they're going to get it back. Easily handled by Roxborough. Now, Schmidt back in the pipe. Hits St. Obey in the chest. Someone check if he's all right. Now, once again, the Spartans. Rempel on the sea ball, dug by Belgian. Oh, what a fantastic defensive sequence here by the Rougey. Oh, and it's put away by Nicolas Fortin. What a series, defensive series, especially there for Laval. I believe it was three huge digs off some big swigs from this Trinity Western team, and they just sat in and did that. We saw that in their quarterfinal matchup, too, that you and I did, Everett, where they just seem so calm. They get those gritty points. We talked about the advantage. If you, you can beat them in the, on that first serve right away, you're going to have a chance. But if you let them hang around from point to point, they just get better and better as it goes on. And that does force Trinity Western to take their first time out here in this first set down 16-13 uh, to Laval. Laval's uh, right now offense is just absolutely rolling. They are 8 for 13. He is 6-15 as a team with no errors. It's awesome. And on our screen here, you see the gold medal game for the Women's Volleyball Championship. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game of the 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship. Uh, I believe it's, sorry, this evening. Or sorry, tomorrow. No, it's, it's this, this evening. This evening, yep. this evening. I'm mixing my days up. Uh, this evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time from McMaster University in Hamilton. All of the action for U Sports Women Volleyball Gold is exclusively on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC, chase the glory. That will be a class up, classic Canada West matchup tonight between the Alberta Pandas and the UBC Thunderbirds. Currently over there at their fifth place match, St. Mary's and McMaster are tied at one set apiece, McMaster leading this in the third, 19-14. Back here at the arc, 16-13 for the Laval Rougeal in the first set of the fifth place match of the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championships presented by Mikasa. My name is Everett DeLorme, Ben Plazoda. And Laval has looked real good early on. And not to say that Trinity hasn't looked good. They've been able to push themselves in, but just some gritty play on defense and some very, very efficient hitting from the Rouge All so far. As I mentioned before we went to that timeout, they're hitting 615 as a team with no errors. And that's the ace by Fortin. What an answer out of that timeout. And you see Fortin flex the muscles there. 
And a little ironic because he did take pace off that serve. Saw that Trinity Western was deep, deep in their serve receive. Little roll over the top and it scores. Trinity Western serve receive has been abysmal this tournament to say the least. As DeGrief goes hard cross court, Belgian home got a touch but not enough. DeGrief's been excellent so far in this first set. I believe he's leading the way offensively for Trinity Western. That's his second or third kill of the match. Got Schoener back to serve here for Trinity Western. Down three. Showing her that one's long. I think a big difference we've seen here today, ever it is the errors on the service line. Laval's done an excellent job of keeping that ball in play, putting it with pace or, or placing it where they need it. Well, Trinity Western, a few too many errors on the service line. That's what better pass there by Elser. Outside to DeGrief. He puts it away. And, you know, coming, coming into these two matchups, uh, in the, after the first two matches, Trinity Western passing is below a two on a three scale. They're passing a 1.8 so far throughout the tournament. And that is not, that's not good enough. No, that's tough, especially when you want to get your middles involved. Hard to do that with that kind of passer rating. Minviz is going to track that one down after a big serve by the Spartans. And Ryan in system. Caden Schmidt to the pipe. And they pull within two. There go. Awesome run in the back there by Schmidt. Just again, it's the, the speed and size that Trinity Western has. It's gonna, they're going to have to use all that to get themselves back in this match. Ryan takes a little bit off it. Nozi is right there in the middle. Adi! And that one's into the net. 17-18. That is the first uh, attacking error of the game for the, the Rouge All. And Gino Busso already has enough and calls a timeout. Yeah, smart time out here. You can feel in this gym a little bit of momentum shifting to the Trinity Western side. Laval really has controlled it all the way through this set, but if I'm Laval, I want to slow things down, take a second to reset. You still have a one-point lead here, and if you just continue to play and do what you've been doing, you'll be okay. I'm expect. I I honestly think Ben that we might be we could honestly be in be in, uh, in for a day of three five setters. Without a doubt, we've got like the matchups we have here today. All three games, you've got talent on both sides. It's it's going to be fun. Could be long, but no one's going to complain, especially when this is the last volleyball of the year for U Sports. Yeah. Why yeah. not have a little bit extra if we can? We've got such quality in all six of the programs like tr truly you have so much quality in all eight of the programs that were here and beyond but really these these three matchups this one I think has the potential to, to, to definitely go to the distance and we've seen the back and forth of it already as the guys had multiple three-point lead that the Spartans are able to come back from as that one is past the attack line now see ball the fault hey, oh he puts that one in perfectly I thought that was going to be out, just the initial, but he put so much spin on that ball that it just curves in and hits the line. Yeah, it just dropped at the last second. Ryan as well, the Trinity Western setter. You saw him leave that ball. He had a chance to take it. He thought it was out as well, but just dropped down and caught that line. Jonathan Adi. Now serving. Put it over. Oh, and that will be way off there by Aaron Elser. Minville now up and Lozier off the hands of the trailing Corneille and once again Laval regains that three point lead that's right just a little slow in the middle there to close that outside block by Corneille and Lozier does a good job of taking advantage of that and going right at him Adi Goes at Schmidt, and that'll be another pass way off. Now Rempel, off speed, puts it down the line. And it's these types of shots, Ben, that Henry Rempel has injected to his repertoire of shots that has truly made him level up this year. 100%. He, he can do a little bit of everything. He can go up and pound the ball. He can place it a tip over the block. Or even just a little change up like that. So versatile for the first team All-Canadian. I remember when Hank was first joining this team and the absolute menace that he could be in serving warm-up but he has refined his game nicely over the years. And Corneal on the run, nicely done by the Spartans. Once and again. Three yeah. point lead back down to one. All right, we just see they will not go away. Laval keeps putting the pressure on. Let's see if 
They'll bend but not break. Degree. Handled by Minvin. That'll go up to Fortin. He shut down. We're tied at 20. Big, big block there. Fortin took it, put everything he had into it, and fortunately sent right back at him. I will say that if you are in the air and you're planning on coming down and maybe saying, like, hey, I'll pop over the final, I'd suggest you do so earlier. This place is starting to fill up. Put over there, nicely handled by Baljamon. Forte on the sea ball again. He makes no mistake. Yeah, Debrief pretty much in the right position there, just sitting on his heels a little bit. You saw him lean back as that ball came at him, unfortunately off his arms and out of bounds. Just got to keep his bounce just a little bit forward to keep that ball in play. St. Aubain going at Elser once again, and that is going to be an ace. We've, talk, we've talked about the service line today a lot, Everett, and again, we continue to see Laval just do an excellent, excellent job, not only serving tough, but with a high, high percentage. You know, I, I, I won't lie. Usually when you talk about an Elser brother, ball control is, is the first thing, but so far Aaron Elser has struggled on service even in this tournament. Yeah, it's been tough for him today, and let's see if he can work out the kinks. We've got still a one-point game here. Trinity Western down one with the serve. Corneal. Passed up there by Lozier. Outside to Fontaine. Oh, yeah, that's a good call. Too strong was Fontaine. He pushed through the block there of Rempel, but also pushed right into the net. Uh, that's a matchup of... Two big individuals there, both guys physical at the net, and you just saw the big push, unfortunately, didn't go Fortane's way. Corneal, put that one over, put up by Minvin. Right side, Lozier, he's blocked, and that is just out. That one was real close. That was close, that real was close. close. Ooh, we might have a real good look of it here. Yeah, just out. Yeah, just good call out. there by our lines official. Understand, I can understand how Ryan would, would have seen that in from the angle that he was on, for sure. As Lozier heads back to serve, Laval with a slight 23-22 lead. Lozier puts it in right at degree. This one, Rempel on the right side. He's blocked, but it's back over on the Laval side. Oh, just tipped over by Chouassi. Not the greatest choice, and Rempel with a missed chance there. Yeah, that's tough. Laval, a little bit lucky, like you said. Tristan tried to throw that one down, just missed time, just jumped, it looked like, a little bit, and couldn't get all of his power into it, and Rumpel with a rare miss out the side, and that forces Trinity Western to take their second and final time out of this first set, trailing by two, and Laval with the first set point of this consolation final. No doubt about it. It was an interesting play there for Terrell Truassi to just put it back. I would have liked to see him maybe try something different, but ultimately worked out for the Wujayal as they are one point away from taking this set. And it, it's been a great one so far, Everett. We've had a lot of back and forth. We've seen Laval, for the most part, command this set, but Trinity Western has never rolled over. They've never fully gone away, so I won't be shocked if they come out of this timeout looking looking to score wouldn't be surprised if they go to schmidt or rempel two of their big gunners that they have but again they've got so many options everywhere to get themselves this side out and laval is just going to look to continue what they're doing win those gritty points they need one more here to take this first set and they look relaxed as they come out of this timeout both teams hitting at a very high clip a 433 for trinity western and a 526 for laval that is, it's, it's been some fantastic the volleyball early going here. Not 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 much sloppiness, just good back and forth action. As Lozier now goes back to the baseline, he looks to close this one out for the Gougeal. Puts it in right at Degree. Now Ryan outside to Schmidt, and he's blocked, but it's out of bounds. Trinity Western stays alive. And there you go, and you've got big Henry Rumpel back to serve here. This could be a game changer for Trinity Western. Down one here. Laval still has a set point. Rempel. 
with a big serve, and that's passed off. And it's going to be a free ball sent over by Fultain. Opportunity now for the Spartans. Ryan to the pipe. De Grief. Is he dug? No. Nuzi can't track it down. We're tied up at 24. Great job by Trinity Western to take advantage of that free ball from Laval. Again, coming off the big serve of Henry Rumpel. And that forces Laval to take their second and final timeout as Trinity Western has taken the last two points after they called their final timeout to tie things up here at 24. It's back and forth. We've seen this yo-yo of a first set. And absolutely love it. This is some fantastic volleyball. Yeah, no shocker at all. There's a reason why these teams are playing for to be the fifth best team in the in the country this year. Both doing a good job, and you've seen these last two points sort of Trinity clean up their errors. Be still be aggressive though on that service line. They have struggled today, but it was good to see Rumpel still swing away at that serve. And I'm not going to be shocked if he does the same thing here again as they yeah. will be coming out of this timeout here shortly. You talk about the quality in this fifth place match, and it just goes to the testament. I truly think that men's volleyball is one of the best products that U Sports has. I don't know any other U Sport competition where there's agents and scouts in the stands from the top leagues in the world. No, oh, right? 100%. Like, so, some of these guys will be going to play in Poland, in Italy afterwards. And it's just a testament to how much this sport has grown in Canada over the past 15 years. As Rempel with the ace and the Spartans take the lead. What a play by Henry Rumpel. We talked about him swinging away, and there he pulls the little change up on Laval and is able to score with a short little spin top over, spin serve over the top. His demeanor is so calm, cool, and collected right now. I've never seen a Henry Rempel right like this, and I absolutely love it. Now here's another opportunity for the Spartans to finish it, and they do. They come from behind and take the first set, 26-24. What a comeback by Trinity Western. They really were behind. It felt like most of this set they would within two, within one, but couldn't really overcome that gap until these final few points. And, of course, led behind their, their leader, Henry Rumble, their first team All-Canadian, going back on the service line with confidence, ripping away on a couple, and then a change-up as well to earn himself an ace. That is the first time I've seen Trinity Western look like Trinity Western in this tournament since set number one against Queens. Yeah, it's been fun to watch. They were, they've were they been excellent today. Again, took them a while to warm up, but we've seen that's been the consistent pattern of all these games this weekend. It takes a little bit for teams to get into, into it, but when they do, it is something special to watch. And we will be back after this short break. You're watching the uh, U Sports National Men's Championship for Volleyball here on CBC Sports. Mark Hees here, president of Canuck Stuff. We've been standing behind our overkill clothing and supporting athletes for over 30 years. We're pumped to be part of this year's U Sports National Championships. For the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team.
And we are back here with set number two, the fifth place match of the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championships at Queen's University, presented by Mikasa. My name is Everett DeLorme, joined by Ben Plazoda, and it is Championship Sunday here on CBC Sports with the uh, volleyball and uh, hockey championships going on across the, across the country. That's right, we've got volleyball, hockey, a little bit of everything. CBC Sports is the home of the University Sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game of the 2024 University Cup uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific on CBC Gem, CBC Sports, CA, and the CBC Sports app. As Ryan gets us going here in the second with a miss serve. And Lozier from the baseline, passed up there by Schmidt to the pipe. Corneille, oh, and Belgeron was almost there to get it up. But St. Aubin couldn't keep it alive. Great swing there by, by Rumpel on the left side. And just looking at some statistics from the first set between these two, they actually hit the same percentage, 429. No surprises. It was a, a two-point game in extra innings here in that first set. So look for that to continue. Not much separating these two teams right now as DeGrief puts one into the net. It's two more missed serves by the Spartans. Yeah, that did seem to be the big turning point for them was they can clean up their service line. They become a scary, scary team. That was the big separation between these two teams. Six serving errors so far for the Spartans in this match and only three for the Rougial. The Rougial, actually the best serving team in this tournament so far. Outside now to Schmidt, rolled over, picked up by St. Aubin. Handled there by Jigal. Fultain is just going to roll, roll it over. And now Rempel is out after taking that first ball. Corneal is blocked. What a great read there by Jonathan Hadi. Yeah, tough, tough matchup there for Hadi as, uh, as the Trinity Western middle was sliding out towards the left side. And he did a good job reading that and able to get the stuff block. Yeah, let's see if he just look, he just jumps in to the seam, spots him last minute. One second he wasn't there, and the other one he was closing that block. Jiha puts it over at the grief. Now Ryan to the right side, Rempel. And you can see just how dug in St. Aubain is on that shot. Rempel just goes up and goes, thank you very much. I'm going to put it in the pot. A little bit of a smirk as Rempel came down from that one too. He knows that right now he's got Laval on their heels and is taking advantage with those short little roll over the top plays. And that serve from Corneal is long. And Nicolas Fortin back to serve for Laval, who you mentioned Everett has done an excellent job from the service line here today and all weekend. Three of the four points for Laval so far have been the Spartan serving errors in this second set. Ryan to the middle and showing her. Finally gets up there and puts one down. Yeah, great turn to showing her there. Able to turn, cut that ball back to the one around the middle block of Adi and pull uh, Trinity Western within one. Rempel out of Swift Current with the ace, and at, like at some point, Laval needs to recognize that he hasn't he hasn't hit one in a while. He's been carving them up with half speed shots this entire time. Like you got to know there is he dips that elbow just a little bit, and there he finally puts one in into one. But there's signs that he's doing it. it he hides it pretty well, but. Still, Laval needs to start picking him up on that. He shouldn't be picking him apart. With, 100%. With, with, with if I'm the Laval shots. coaching staff, I'm looking for some of those signs so I can let my guys know, especially our liberos, what to look for when he is going to lay up on his serve. Great pass there by Aaron Elster. And St. Aubin on the tip. Hank was there, but just barely got a touch on it. Heads up play by Aubin, or St. Aubin, pardon me, to take advantage of the sleeping left side there for Trinity Western. So just the tip over, Belgian puts it right on, and Aubin with a good vision and good timing. He hasn't really tipped much this tournament. Way to put it in there and keep those block Trinity Western blockers guessing as showing her goes two for two here. Starting to heat up here yeah. in the second set, and we, we talked about this earlier. If Trinity Western can get their middles going, it's just going to open up the floor for everybody else and really make this dynamic offense roll. Yeah, showing her goes the one side on his first swing goes to the other side five on his next one Schmidt Spartans lead here one nothing and another off speed 
by the Spartans. Catches that bat off guard. Ryan goes on two for some reason. I'm not sure why. And just put it over there by Seto Bay. Another chance here. Rempel. Seaball. He's blocked. Los Yeh on the left side. Big, big block there on Henry Rempel. Adam Schreimer not too happy about something going on in the net. I think this has to do something with a net touch as he's talking to the down referee, Nick Foos. There's Adi now back to serve. Laval with a slight two-point lead, and there's the ace on to grief. Jonathan Adi has done an excellent job. We often see these big, heavy spin serves create problems for teams but those nasty float serves have moved to side to side they're low and they're fast it can be difficult difficult to control for serve reception teams the serving from the middles in this tournament has been exceptional Adi with another tough one goes right back at the grief past the attack line now Rempel on the sea ball and he's blocked Stand back back to back blocks by Lowe's yay on Rempel and that has opened up a four point gap here for Laval early in the second set, leading nine to five behind the serve of Jonathan Adi. Of course we know that no lead is safe in this match. Adi, into the net. Schoener now going back to serve to New Western. Done an excellent job in the front row in this second set. Let's see if he can continue on the service line. Showing her with a big serve there, but nicely handled by the Rougiol. Now Falte out of the back row, dug by Showing her. And it falls! Hey! Middle defense at its best. You gotta love it. Love to see that. Shauna really has been the spark here for Trinity Western. He's got two kills in the front row. A good serve there and a big dig. Call that the bump Ooh, kill. Look at that. Oh, just the two-handed dig. Someone give him a white jersey. Showing her. Again, from the baseline. And that's almost an ace, but it's going to be a free ball sent over. And oh, my goodness. What is happening? A little bit of a miscommunication there for Trinity Wester. And you saw Schmidt and Rumpel both kind of hesitate pump fake going for that ball and then both stop thinking the other's going to go get it and it drops in front of both of them unfortunate play there for Trinity Western and fortunate play for Laval that's that's Schmidt's ball all ball all day that has to be the six back guy as Jean shuts the door on to grief and we, there was a second there where I thought that we were going to be within one all set and another four point lead from Laval incredible 100 percent Laval tough break at the end that first set really giving up the lead that they had all game to drop it to Trinity Western but it doesn't seem to phase them at all they've come out gunning in this first set doing a little bit of everything defensively with the digs uh, setting the ball well in the front row and running their offense and again we've seen some stuff blocks here that have really brought the energy up for this Laval team and that actually forced Trinity Western to take their first time out of this set down 7-11 here to Laval and we got back-to-back -back ugly bump kills. <laughs> Not, I can't say I was uh, expecting to see a lot of that, especially two of them back-to-back -back here in a consolation final of the U-Sports Nationals. And here you see the Trinity Western team. You see the focus on some of these players' faces in their huddle and Laval also getting themselves ready. They look cool, calm, collected. Doing all the dirty work here today. And let's see if Trinity Western, they've been excellent out of timeouts, responded well right away, and let's see if they'll do that here. We've got DeGrief in the front row on the left side here. Let's see if they look to get him involved here. He was great in the first set. St. Bank going at DeGrief, and Falte is there to put that one down. Ryan wanted an overtouch on that, and I think that if someone on the Trinity side had gone up and challenged for it, he may have gotten that call, but they just kind of sat and camped underneath. St. Obang once again goes at Schmidt, and that's a under a one pass there. 
Nicely handled by Valjean. Outside, Lozier, roll shot, easily handled by Elser. Ryan now, outside to DeGrief. That's a recycle. Ryan will get it back, and he's going to swing on two. We saw Ryan try that earlier in this set, and it didn't pay off for them, but there it does. Such a weapon there. Ryan, with his height, able to go up on that second contact. Laval not expecting it and putting that ball away. Now, you saw Juval standing, and he did not respect that at, at all, which may work out in Trinity's favor as they push through. They still lead by one, but trail by four here in this second set. St. Aubin to the right side. Lozier uses that block. And Lozier continues to be sort of the spearhead here in this second set. He had the two big stuff blocks on Henry Rumble on the right side, and there he goes and takes advantage of off hands to score another point to restore this uh, five five point lead here, sorry, for Laval. Now Lozier to serve once again. Passed up by DeGrief. Now Ryan. Rumble way off the net. Rolls it over and he scores. Uh, I think we've seen Rempel score more on roll shots today than anything else. Yeah, it, it's... I'm not going to say it's bizarre. I think it's just a testament to how much his game has grown, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see. I'm no idea what Belgian Home is doing. They're caught napping in the back row, not getting to the outside of that block. Now DeGree. And a big serve by the Spartans. And maybe that's what DeGree needs to get himself going. He has struggled in the second set in serve receive, so it's great to see him back on the service line ripping an ace like that. A lot of aces so far for the Trinu, or a lot of errors so far for the Spartans, so it's nice to see them get an ace. Minville passes that one up and goes outside to Fultain. Roxborough slowly gets there with the pancake, and Schmidt will put that one out of bounds. Man, Roxborough was crawling to that shot. And defense turning into offense there for defense turning into offense there for the Spartans. Great little pancake there by Foxborough to pick that up and Schmidt makes no mistake off the block. Also, we apologize for those watching. It is actually 1-0 in sets for Trinity Western and not Levat. Our mistake as Ryan is going to get that one up. And the Spartans. Oh, oh, he was he got there. No, he didn't. No, that ball tight, though. He almost got there. Back-to-back -back pancakes would have been quite the play, but didn't quite go his way. That's... Quite a few miscues in the back row there for the Spartans. Ryan, the outside to Schmidt. They're blocked down, but they get it back. Rempel, sorry, will get it again. Goes off the block for a second time. Now, in the pipe to the grief. He finishes it. Great swing by there. Swing into the back row there by DeGrief. Again, you just see when they run him out of the back row, it's with such speed, such tempo. They do a great job. The connection he, the, him and his center have is just... Excellent. Right now, Adam Schmart having a conversation with Taylor Roxborough on the sidelines. He's being pretty emphatic that he needs to own that backcourt. He needs to go out there and, and own any junk that's coming over, any second ball, and that someone needs to step up leadership-wise on the court for the Spartans because there's just too much up and down in the game. That's right. Ball tank. Puts it over at degree. And they're going to go in the middle of showing her. Dug up by Belgium. Oh, they're going to get it back. Ryan to the middle, showing her with his third kill of the set. Showing her, doing an excellent job, just being a big presence there in the middle for Trinity Western. And he's been able to score consistently here in the second set, pulling Trinity Western within two. Middle bow definitely going the Spartans' way now as Rempel is at the baseline. Handled there by Louis Yi. And he shut down his Falte by Corey Schoener. Big, big block by Schoener, and he is putting his stamp on the second set for Trinity Western Spartans. I think that's his fifth point of the set. He has three kills, an ace, and now a block as Rempel sprays that one out of bounds. I think you're right. He's done an excellent job in this set, contributing almost a third of more than a third Spartans points for yes, yeah, more than a third. Sorry, five, five out of fourteen. Don't worry, Ben. You're just a teacher. You don't need math. <laughs> so 
Sorry, I shouldn't say de- just a teacher. Teachers are massively important. The worst part is I do teach math. As well. <laughs> what grade? Uh, high school math. Okay. Well, that that there's to the service line here, down one for the Spartans. We'll just hits him with the changeup. Good pass there by Liu Zi in the middle to ID, and he shut down point number six of the set for Corey showing her. Awesome job by Corey Schoener, kind of single-handedly here, forcing Laval to take their first time out of the set as he ties things up here for Trinity Western, 16-16, midway through the second set. It's almost like someone clued him in that we were maybe questioning him a little bit in between sets there because I think Corey Schoener has more points in this set than, he, than, he, than he's had, had in the 10 previous, this, or 11 previous this. Yeah, he's done an excellent job just playing with confidence, and just see, he's really seeing things right now, especially for a middle. Sometimes it could be hard. You're chasing guys fast, high power offenses to get out there and block. And he's done an excellent, excellent job here in the second set to uh, crawl Trinity Western out of this hole and tie things up. You can see, look at him, he's ready. First guy coming back out onto the court. He wants this ball back in play. He's feeling good. All tied up at 16s here. As this has been a yo-yo of a match, but Laval has the Laval has tr- led for pretty much like 99% of this contest, yep. and yet we're all tied up at 16-16, and they trail one nothing in sets. <laughs> exactly, Trinity Western just will not go away. Schmidt with the roll shot. On Ozie and Falte is shut down and the Spartans take the lead. I think that one was Pierce to grief. To grief, but what a great close again by uh, Schoener. Yeah. Right, just doing everything out here for his team. And, and Schmidt back on the service line on an excellent run here for the Spartans. Probably their best service run of the match. Hayden Schmidt. Goes at Nozier, finally a good pass for the Rougiard. Now outside, Max Nozier makes no mistake. Nozier, he, he was excellent to start this set, really taking advantage of his uh, his blocking ability early. Two stuff blocks, but he's kind of gone away, so good to see him get himself back involved here for Laval. As Adi goes back to serve, last time he was back, he went on a little service run of his own too. Adi's serve has been deadly all weekend long. And another one goes out to grief, and that's another bad pass there by the Spartans. That one's going to be tight, and Fultain is right there. And Seto Bay with the two-hand dump puts it over and scores. Heads up play again by Seto Bay. We've seen that's the second time he's taken advantage of a sleeping left side block and has gone and scored that ball in the middle of the pot. Laval regains their slight lead here, looking to tie things up. Adi, oh, that was a real good serve, and once again, how many bump kills are we going to see? What is going on on the Laval, who's the all side? And if you're to grief, there is a big sigh of relief for you. Adi was coming oh. at him, picking on him in that serve receive rotation, so maybe that's the little bit of something he needs to help his confidence in his passing, but I agree, Everett, that's the third time we've seen that here today. Just so many uncharacteristic things on happening on the Laval side. They're just getting beat by short serves and roll shots and letting things fall that they really shouldn't. This is not Laval Rougeau volleyball as we know it. No, but great swing there by Gerard out of the middle. Haven't said his name very often today, so let's see if they can get him involved. He has the size to really make a difference here in this Constellation Championship. Gerard there, or sorry, there's St. Aubin. De Grief. Yeah, I mistimed his jump. He was way too early, and that's thrown down with authority by Fortin. Yeah, you see our head official talking to Fortin. Maybe a little bit of chatter through the net there, but... One of the worst things about volleyball is how we don't let them even just talk a little bit. You know, like, like the things you hear from football and hockey and soccer about what they're saying to each other is... And volleyball, you can't even look at a guy wrong now. 
as Jonathan Giral gets a big block and a three-point lead here for the Huzayal. And just like that, right, they climb, having to take a timeout for all their way out of a no, hole, sorry, but a tie game to regain that three-point lead. And we see different people from Laval step up at a different tire, times. Right now with Jonathan Girard doing an excellent job with the offense and a big block in the middle there to force Trinity Western to take their second and final timeout of the second set down 21-18 to Laval. And we've seen Trinity Western again all night. They call a timeout and they come out of it and they, they take care of business. So let's not be surprised if they're able to do that again. They do an excellent job kind of just resetting, taking this short minute to get themselves back on track and do what they need to do yeah. to climb out of a hole. And they feel like they've been in a hole all day here. Mm -hmm. Both teams listening intently to their coaches coming about out back at the around the same time. And one thing I've noticed from both of these teams is they, they like to get back out on the court early after timeouts. Last night against Guelph, especially later in the match, uh, Trinity Western was making a point of standing out there waiting for the other team. Same thing uh, in the past two games for Davad. When uh, McMaster was calling timeouts yesterday, they were on their court early waiting for the other team. Just playing those psychological mind games sometimes as Rempel was going to squeeze that one through on the sea ball. Yeah, a good swing by Rempel there. Find him in the back row, and he's going to score. And again, we see when Trinity Western needs a point, they go to those big dogs. Rempel being there, usually their number one option. Ryan, we know what kind of pressure he can put from the baseline, but that is a perfect pass by Vanville. The X play. Love that. Great little deception there by Laval as Fortin comes around his middle into the into the middle of the court for the meter ball there. Now we're seeing that substitution come in, Terrell Tuasi. In has, he has the ability to add a little more offense here on the left side for Laval. Maybe that's what they're looking to push and, themselves to the set. And a little bit more blocking yes. as Henry Rempel has now come to the front row. Lozier goes at Elser. That's going to be a tight pass put down by Tuasi but kept alive by the Spartans. Good pass there by Belgenon in system to the pipe. Lozier, he puts it away. And there's monsters, or there's children in the monsters world. We're at 23-19. <laughs> I know you wanted that call last night. I, Everett didn't I did. get it. You got to hear this or this afternoon. I got so excited right there. <laughs> Anytime we get close to it, it's just from the days of coaching like U13 girls volleyball, like we talked about like, hey, let's get to the Monsters Inc. point, 23-19. Because at that age, that's that's all they want, the Monsters Inc. point. They don't even care if they get to 25. I have literally coached games where we've been up 23-19, acted like we've won, and then lost 25-23. There you go. Nice run in the middle there by Trinity Western. That's Corneal that's able to put that one away. You see the substitution back into the game is uh, Minville for Laval. Great pass by Belgenon. In the middle to Girard. Makes no mistake. Oh, and Laval now with set point here in this in this second set. But Trinity Western in a very similar position. I think they were only down two, now down four in the first set. But they've they've been down before. Let's see if they can crawl out. And Girard is going to go back to serve here for Laval. Girard. Good float serve. Pass to the attack line by Elzer. Outside to Schmidt. And he goes backdoor OT to put it down. The Spartans stay alive for one more. And the Spartans, they've got a good rotation here in the front row with Schmidt, Rumble, and Schoner here. All who have been offensive weapons for them today. So options anywhere to go. Corneal just clips the net. Pass behind the attack line. Right side, Falte. He puts that one wide. Yeah, that ball just looked a little bit behind him there and couldn't quite control it to get that to drop inside. And Laval doesn't want to let Trinity Western gain any more momentum here. It's going to take their final time out of this second set. Still up to 24-22. No, we know. We know what happened yesterday. Or, sorry, in the last set. And then later on, so Laval and Mitch wants to make sure they stop the, bleed, the, bleed, the bleeding right away. That's right. Good time out here by... By Laval, they know 
They've done an excellent job passing the ball all night, and that has allowed them to open up their offense. So, and we talked about Everett, sorry, you talked about these teams coming quick out of these timeouts, right? A little bit of that mental game, but also at this stage, these guys know what they need to do. Maybe just a couple quick reminders from their coaches, let them get a little wa bit of water and get back out onto the court and do what they do best. Right, you, you and I have talked a few times about is it a tactical timeout or an emotional timeout? And sometimes those emotional timeouts are just a quick breath, a quick sip of water. I used to do breath work in my timeout, you know, a little bit of meditation. Just something to recenter yourself and to get going again. That's right. And Cornel, Cornel is back to serve here for Trinity. You can hear the whistles from the Laval fans. A one-handed set by Fultzy. Sorry, St. Aubain is wide there by Fultzy and Trinity Western. Creeping in once again, and all Gino Busso can do is grimace. It's Corneal back to serve here for the Spartans. Passed up there by Lozier to Adi, and he finishes it off. Laval ties it up, 25-23. Fitting to go to the middle there for Laval. They've done an excellent job. It was Girard who got them back into this set. Or sorry, he cre created that lead for them late in this set. And then Adi, they've just done an excellent job through the middle today. Those two for Laval. And they've really done a great job all weekend. And we are all tied up here. 1-1 one, one in yeah. this best of five matchup. This has now become a best of three. And we will be back here with the U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championship fifth place match. Mark Hees here, president of Canuck Stuff. We've been standing behind our overkill clothing and supporting athletes for over 30 years. We're pumped to be part of this year's new sports national championships. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur d'un univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline, immersing you in the game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur d'un univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. And we are back here at the U Sports National Championship in Kingston, Ontario for the men's volleyball consolation final We've got lots of championships going on this weekend and cbc sports is the home of university sports in canada catch the gold medal game of 2024 gfl u sports women's hockey championship presented by connect energy this sunday night at 8 p.m eastern time 5 p.m pacific on cbc gem cbc sports.ca and the cbc sports app u sports on cbc chase the glory and Everett, we uh, we are split here, one-one in this championship semifinal. We saw the consistency between the hitting percentage of both of these teams in the first set, and still very similar. Laval hitting at 349 and Trinity Western 338, but a big difference we're seeing here on the statistics is the service errors by Trinity Western. Uh, the number I have here in front of me has 10, with Laval only four. Right, both of these sets being decided by two points. That was six points difference in serve receive could be a big deal here. Let's see if Trinity Western can 
clean things up and let's see if Laval can continue with the tough serving that they've done here today. Yeah, this one has been very interesting as it's kind of evened its way out. And to be honest, Levad could very well be up to 2 nothing here if it wasn't for the fantastic play late down the stretch by Trinity Western in that first set. And Henry Rempel continues to just... The, the, he's playing like a small guy all of a sudden. I know he's like a little bit understatured. And, and I say that in the best way possible. He's being smart. He's making shots, high off hands, roll shots. Just really changing it up. Ryan. That's a big serve. Belgian all up to the task. Now, Lozier. Oh, and he's shut down. A big block there by Caden Schmidt. Schmidt with the big, big walk on Lozier. If I'm Trinity Western, that's what I want. Lozier was heating up at the end of that second set, and Schmidt able to get one back on him. Ryan going after Minvid. What a nice little run there to Jehal, but that's off the tape and out of bounds, and Trinity Western would their biggest lead of the match, 3-0. Yeah, a great start for Trinity Western here. Unfortunate bounce off the tape there by a nice run by Girard and out of bounds, but Trinity Western will take it up three. Ryan continues to serve. Another good one, and that's an ace. 4-0 for the Spartans. What a serve by Ryan. You talked about his ability to change a game with that serve he has. You saw him do it yesterday against Guelph, and he has come out firing here leading Trinity Western to an early 4-0 lead and forcing Laval to take their first and early timeout here in this third set. Yeah, as a coach, you never want to take a timeout before 8. Like that, that, was, that was generally my rule back in the day. Of course, it wasn't at this level. But very good um, presence by Trinity Western to come out and play that way. We said earlier, a little bit earlier, if they're going to be successful, it's going to have to be on the back of their serving, right? That's how they're going to knock Laval off their kilter because offensively, Laval's going to be up to the task on, on defense. So they really need to do it from the baseline. 100%. And here you see Laval, first one back out onto this court. Got their head coach slapping everybody's hand, trying to get a little bit of energy back instilled in his team. And we're going to see Ryan head back to the service line here up 4 nothing as he's just been leaning into these last few spin serves. Ryan with a nice serve there. And Falte with a big swing cross court. Get themselves on the board. Yeah, great swing there by Falte. Heads up shot by him to find the cross court angle to score. Lozier. See if he can start the comeback right here from the baseline. Goes at Elser. That is a good pass to Corneal. And he rolls that one off the block of Adi, or sorry, Girard and down. Yeah, great up there by Aaron Elser. He struggled a little bit in serve receive here today, so that was a great to see him pass that ball up to two and a half and let his setter run his offense. Here's Caden Schmidt. Formerly well, spent last this past summer with the junior national team, and that one is long. 5 2. Three seems to be the number here today of leads back and forth. Maybe one or two points within that, but three has been our number. Handled out time by Rempel. They're all stacked up on that sideline. Brought up by Lozier and tracked down by Fultain. Free ball sent over. Chance here for the Spartans. Ryan to Corneal. He slowed down, but it's not enough as St. Aubain got stuck. Nice run there by Ryan in the middle to Corneal. We've seen Ryan really trying to get their, his middles involved early here in this set. We saw how, how effective Trinity Western can be when their middles are rolling. Gino, not happy about that one. And Corneal, Corneal sorry. Oh, in the pipe to Lozier. And that will be a back row violation by the Rougeau. Yeah, good swing there by Lozier out of the back row. Unfortunately, just a toe over the line. And it goes Trinity's way up five now in this third set. Cornel. Oh, and that one is in there. That pins the ace. Gino Brusso says it's out. But I definitely saw that one in. 
Yeah, here's the replay of that serve. Deep float. Oh, yeah, oh, right on that, it that does red catch line. The line. There's a lot of things I love about the arc, Ben Plazoda, but I absolutely abhor this tiny red line on the, the navy in that back. It's so hard to see. Yeah, a little hard with the color, the contrast of colors at times there in the middle of the court. Fortunately, Corneal puts that serve into the net. Both so time. Rolls that one off the net. Now right side to Rempel speeds that one up. Dug by Feltain. It's going to be a joust at the net. Surprised we didn't have a net call there. De Grief into the block, but it kept alive. Now for Davad. St. Aubain tips it over. Tracked down by Schmidt and Ryan to the right side. Rempel blasts that one through the block. Great job by Trinity Weston there defensively. Aaron Elser all over the court, picking up balls off the block, digging the ball in the back row. He's really come alive here in this third set. Rumpel's going to go back to serve after that swing on the right side. He's another guy, you know, we started commenting about his serve receive, and I thought he didn't touch the ball as much in that second set, but it was much more solid, and he's been great here in the third. Maybe we see we, some of these service woes continue here for Trinity Western. It's the last two they've missed there. They still lead by five here, though. And there... Biggest lead in the match. As Schmidt's going to pass that one to the net. And he'll get it back in the pipe. Oh, my goodness. Look at Schmidt. Wow. Schmidt, actually, before the match, Everett, I don't know if you were up here with me. He he came up and requested a change of song to get himself fired up. And next oh. thing you know, we had some hardcore rock and roll playing. Okay. And you see Gavin Schmidt out here just pounding balls K into the ground. Caden Schmidt. Caden Schmidt. My yeah. apologies. Hey, man, if you're mixing up Caden Schmidt and Gavin Schmidt, though, <laughs> Up there on the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> oh, and that was a great serve by DeGrief. It... Minviz said that didn't touch, but you, everyone could hear it. 100%. And that's that's the third or fourth time we've seen that short roll over the top spin serve score on Laval. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, it's mind-boggling to me that basically tipping is what is pushing Trinity forward right now because that is Laval's bread and butter as DeGrief unloads on that one, and that's another ace into the rafters. Just the versatility of serves we've seen here by DeGrief, able to roll one short over the top and then just go in and lean into another one there, and it can't be handled. These are some high, high ceilings we have here in the arc, so yeah. the pace on that ball to get it all the way up into the rafters is something special by DeGrief. With another one, that one dribbles off the net. And now ID on the back row, and DeGrief is unable to get it. And we actually had a substitution coming in the game here uh, for the Rougeau. Number 12, Anthony Urbain. First year out of saint Jerome. Oh, no, sorry. First year out of Laval. He went to saint Jerome for saint ID with the kill there on the last play, and he's going to go back with this tough float serve that he has. It's a low pass there, and just going to be dumped over by Rempel. What is... This is, this is getting a little bit much here for Laval. You see some of the faces over on the sideline of just pure disbelief, it seems like. With Now I believe is that the third or fourth one that we've seen just drop on the Laval side. Tough, tough break there for them. Trinity Western rolling. I am speechless. Speechless is showing her with another big serve, and it comes back. Chalk another plus up for showing her as Caden Schmidt will tip that one over the top. 14-5 now for the Spartans. Uh, they just continue to flex their muscles and they're, they're doing a little bit of everything today. The ability to swing away or tip over the block, put in that short float or swing away on the service line, I think is maybe playing with Laval a little bit here and they don't know what's coming every time the ball goes up in the air. They're just questioning themselves left, right and center are the Rougeau. In the middle now to Chigal. Great run there by Girard. He's been excellent all night. I could see a few stand, fans in the stands being like, why don't you guys just do that every time? <laughs> if only it was that easy. Classic dad at the club tournament. Used to play hockey, doesn't know volleyball. Well, why did, why did you guys just, 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 it looks easy. Why don't you just do it? Right side now to Rempel. Great swing by Rempel out of the sea. 
the, the defensive intensity right now on Nevada's side is lacking. It really is. And we've seen Trinity really pick up their serve receive here too. That was a great up by Schmidt on a tough, tough serve from Laval. Another big bomb there by Ryan. Tracked down by Roxborough. In system now. Pierce to the pipe. Tugged nicely by Minville. This is just going to be, oh, Fontaine gets there. Easily handled by the Spartans. Right side, Rempel. He's blocked. That's Fontaine and Girard turning that ball away. That's the most energy we've seen from Laval here in this third set this, ever. This, this next point is going to be really indicative of what's going to happen next. Laval is a, is a very difficult team to stop once they start building that momentum. That was a momentum manufacturing play. The response here from Trinity Western is real important as they're going to pass that one off. Here's Rempel trying to get his team out of the bime. He'll roll it over. Another shot here for Laval to get one back. Falte on the right. He rolls that. Ryan going to the ground, free ball. Now to Avad, one on one, Falte! Oh, and he wastes it wide. Fortin has struggled on the right side today. We saw him put two out the side like that in the second set and one there. Ball looked to be a little bit behind his head, but with his skill level, usually he's able to fix that ball and put it in play. Now that, real, real good offensively in the first, hitting a 429. They were the best in the second with a 273, but really struggling right now. A minus 091. As Schmidt serve goes into the net. But Laval still half the points there. And you can see Gino like clapping and trying to get his boys going. They're missing a little bit of energy and they're missing a little, little bit of that intensity. 100%. Let's see if Girard can go back here and spark them again after that big block he had in the front row. Jihad. Going at Schmidt. That'll be high to the outside to DeGrief. Oh, good there, dig there by Jihad, but the Spartans get it back. In the middle, the Corneal. No one home. What a run there by Ansel Ryan. Awesome run there. A little bit of a rubber shoulder for Corneal. Able to reach back and snap on that ball to put it down in the middle of the Laval court. Trinity Western much, much more efficient here in set number three, nine for 17 with only a single error as Belgian Hall passes that one perfectly. Falte is shut down. Massively by showing her end degree. Big, big block there by Trinity Western and that is gonna force Laval to take their second and final time out here, down 10 in this third set. And Everett, this is the most lopsided set we've seen here today. The first two decided by two points and here, Trinity Western has opened up the can with a 10-point lead. Yeah, they really have. Very impressive play by the Spartans. They have come back on almost an entirely new team here in this second set. Sorry, third set. This is They are looking real good at the moment. And you see, you see the coaching staff here for Laval trying to instill some energy. You can see the passion on his face as he speaks to his team in this timeout. They know they can play with Trinity Western. They know they're supposed to be here. They just have to find a way to dig themselves out of this rut they're in right now. We, we know this game, right, Ben? And sometimes you just lose a few of those points early and you just get into that hole. And once you're mentally in that hole, you can kind of, you can kind of let it get away from you. It's so hard to crawl back into it. 100%. We've got substitution coming into the game here for Laval. That's Terrell Trush, uh Chuasi in for Fontaine. Maybe give him Fontaine a little bit of a breather here. Rest the legs before the fourth set. Yeah. And see if Chuasi can maybe spark something in the Laval. You know, I talked to Fontaine after their win last night and he won the MVP and he was saying that he was real tired. He's still feeling those effects of the food poisoning early in the week as Rempel makes no mistake and now that lead is 11. Again, it's so tough to do, right? Those who have been sick or had food poisoning it's you're not fine the next day it usually no. is take multiple days for him to yeah. be out here and playing how he is is very impressive Lozier puts that one up Adi will go long Trinity Western just continues to roll here and they're keeping things simple Trinity in this set they are just Laval making errors letting them make errors and they just keep putting the pressure on and keep rolling at their pace of play. As we see Adi come out of the game here for Laval and it's Felix Dufour in for him. 
That serve by Corneal into the net. Laval's bench still staying stoked. Love to see that for Laval. They're gonna, they need something. Showing her, just gonna dump it over. And now to the pipe, Lozier. That is a good swing, right? You gotta start building some momentum to the, for the next set here. Excellent swing by Lozier out of the back row. He's done a really good job out of the back row all weekend. Just so creative and really good at taking the angle. Chwesi with the floater. Nice pass there by Elser. In the middle, showing her. He's been automatic. Yeah, showing her he was rolling in the second set. At one point, he had over a third of his team's points, and he continues to do that here in the third with now an 11-point gap, 21-10 in favor of the Spartans. Rempel takes a little bit off it. That's going to be a tight pass, but nicely done by Valjean. Oh, and that's Dufour with his first kill of the match. What nice thing to see from Laval there, too. Uh, Rempel took some pace off that ball like he has, which has been aces all day for him. And Laval with a great read to pass that up and run their middle offense. Nice pass there by Elser. Ooh, and Belgian Hall was all over that tip by Ryan. Fantastic dig from Rempel. Ryan tracks it oh. down. And Rempel, can he put it over? He does. That's in play. We are good to go. Here's Navad coming back. Lozier down the line. Puts it away. What a, that was a good rally. Both teams, right? Laval doing what they're supposed to do, running their offense. But what a scramble by the Spartans there to keep it alive to give themselves a chance. Just a little bit of life now in under the wings here of the Hujayal, really building that momentum for the next set. Rempel now, Seaball, he's blocked. Zufour and Lozier. Zufour has come into this game and instilled a little bit of energy. That's a block by him. He had a great run out of the middle. And Laval slowly chipping away, trying to build some momentum here. Yeah. No matter what happens now at the end of this set, you know Nevada is going to be going into that into, into that all afterwards, feeling better than they were. Great swing by DeGrief on the left side, able to turn that ball down the line and find the sideline there. So now we'll go up 22-13, and he's gonna go back to serve for the Spartans. DeGrief has been serving well here in set number four, three. Easily handled by Baljagon. Outside now to Lozier. Big hands in front of him, but off the block and out of bounds for Laval. Schoener just couldn't quite turn that one in. You could see, you could see on his face he's upset with himself there because he knows he can turn that in, and that's going to be a stuff block. It's full into the net. And that brings the Spartans within two. Keep on doing that thing where I look at the board and it says Queens. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, it's a, I'm having a real hard time not calling them Queens. It is hard. Trinity Western, Shona are back to serve here. That serve by Shona is long. Ben here gonna go into the back row. See if he can get his spin serve going. Oh Ben with a nice serve there, nicely handled by Schmidt and Corneal. Perfectly in rhythm. Corneal is having himself a game here in this third set. Just so fast, snap with his arm. He's able to open up his shoulders really well. So even when Ryan is off the net, Corneal is always an option for him in the front row. Chouassi with a fantastic swing. Awesome off-balance swing there by Chouassi. Falling out of bounds. But they will snap on top of that and find the sideline. And Lozier, that one goes long. And that is going to... Give Trinity Western this third set here, 
It gives them a 2-1 lead here in this best of five matchup for the fifth place at the national finals here in Kingston, Ontario. And we will be right back shortly with set number four. Marquise here, president of Canuck Stuff. We've been standing behind our overkill clothing and supporting athletes for over 30 years. We're pumped to be part of this year's New Sports National Championships. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Marquis here, president of Canuck Stuff, and this is a short video. Overkill short. Get yours today at overkill.ca. Feel every hit, goal, and... And welcome back to the 2024 U-Sport Men's Volleyball National Championship hosted by... Queen's University here in Kingston, Ontario. We've got lots of championships going on this weekend, and CBC Sports is the is Canada's home for university sports as we present the gold medal game of the 2024 U Sports uh, Women's Volleyball Championship pre presented by Macassa Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. From opening service to the awarding of the champion trophy, you can see all the action exclusively on CBC Gem and CBCSports.ca. And we're back here, Trinity Western, with the service ace to begin the game. Ryan continues to roll from the service line here for Trinity Western as they take a 1-0 lead and are up 2-1 in this best-of-five matchup here for the Constellation Championship at the U Sports National Men's Volleyball Championship. Ryan to serve. A little spin over up, and that one's just out the side. Good eye there by Laval to let that one go wide. Lossier is going to go back to serve for Laval. He's done an excellent job from the service line here today. Spin serve coming in. And that one is just long out the back. Back to back miss serves here for, or teams trading miss serves, sorry. We've got Schmidt going to go back to serve here for the Spartans. Schmidt led them in their semifinal victory with 22 kills yesterday, and he's done an excellent job of continuing his offense here. Serve in, and that one's into the net. We talked about the service woes for some of these teams here, and or a couple early missed serves. Let's see if they can clean that up, and we've got Jonathan Girard back to serve here for Laval. Indeed. I'm back in a few pounds later. Now here's Yuha. 
Caden Schmidt passing that one up and thrown down there by Corneal. Corneal just continues where he left off in that third set. He was dominant at the net, able to kind of score at will. He's just so good at using his body, contorting his shoulders and able to find the open spot on the court for Trinity Weston as they take an early one point lead. Good pass there by Belgian home. Adi off the block, out of bounds. Good to see Laval get Adi involved early. He's a big difference maker for them, and he, he kind of went quiet there, and they, Laval struggled to pass, so hard to run your middles if you're not passing the ball as best as you can, but good to see him involved early. Fortin into the net. We saw a bit of a swing so far in those first two sets. We talked about how evenly matched the hitting percentage was for each team. Rempo, and that's an ace, perfectly into the corner. Great swing by Rempo, but, and again, Trinity Western continues to roll now with their hitting percentage up to 371, and Laval's down to 270. That is an ace, literally anywhere, on that serve by Rempo, and then he goes another place and that will be tipped into the antenna. Henry Rempel's off-speed stuff has been too much for Daval to handle. And they still haven't adjusted to it. They have not. It's been tough for Laval today in serve receive against Rempel. And Rempel puts that one into the net. Trinity Western up two here early in this fourth. That serve by Minville just long. And, and the serving woes for both of these teams are continuing right now, Everett. I believe that's three, three aside. They have either gone out the side or out the back or into the net. And let's see if DeGrief here can clean things up. He did a great job in the third set for the Spartans on the service line. That one catches the tape, but it comes back over. Handled by Schmidt. Ryan takes a quick look in the pipe. DeGrief tips it over. Blocked by saint -Aubain. Nicely dug there by Belgian Hall. Outside to Lozier. He takes a second. Swings away. Great dig by Roxborough. That's his best play of the tournament. And another one. As there's just commotion going on to the Trinity side of the court there. Lozier is blocked by showing her. And there was a moment there where Roxborough and Schoenher collided. I think Roxborough actually accidentally kicked Schoenher in the head. Schoenher was able to get up, recenter himself, and close the block. Yeah, you see all of his teammates checking on him there. What a play by Schoenher, though. That laying on the ground to a massive stuff block to give his team a four-point lead. That is a play. To grief now as Trinity Western looking much like the last set, overpowering Laval from the baseline and another strong serve as they lead by four. Oh, big dig by De Grief. No right side ends again to Fultay and Roxborough gets there. Great move there by the Libero and Caden Schmidt will block him. That's going to be sent over. Now Ryan, oh, that was not sure what he was doing on that one. That was far too easy. Now here's Fultay. And you know what? He was not expecting that set and kind of rushed that swing. The Spartans get bailed out. And you see yep. here is Fultain. How about the, the pan, is that two, three pancakes by Roxborough, Roxborough today here on St. Patty's Day? A little pancake meal for him. They're doing an excellent job of just being all over the court. Picking balls up and taking a five-point lead here as Laval took their first time out. 2-1 in set lead, and Trinity is rolling right now, Everett. And when they get rolling, we know that they're hard to slow down. And if there's one team, though, that I think could do it, it's Laval. Laval is, they're gritty. They're going to win those 30 points, but they've got to they've got to go now if they want to get themselves back into this game. Laval needs to up their defensive intensity. They need to start battling for some balls in the back row that are ultimately going to keep them alive and going. 100% and we're going to see both teams come back out in this fourth set. Laval with a, sorry, pardon me, uh, Trinity Western with a five-point lead here. The grief on the service line 
He has been excellent. He missed his first few early in this game, and he has cleaned it up since, putting pressure on with his spin serve. Navad, one of the worst first ball side out teams in this tournament as we see they struggle on it again, but they get it back. Outside now to Lozier, rolls it over, easily handled by the Spartans. And showing her on the back quick. Showing no ill effects of that collision he had a few points ago as he continues to roll offensively. He's been a big blogger all weekend, but he's finally got his offense going here today. And Gino Brusso is trying to get his team going as their reactions after points are pretty demoralizing. That serve just long there by the grief. Gotta love, you got, a, you got a, uh, a trio of young Queens fans sitting right behind the baseline who are fighting over to get the game ball touches. Love to see that. Love to see the young fans that we've seen here this weekend. I know got a lot of club volleyball players. This is something for them to see, to aspire to be one day. Imagine you could keep the ball like you did at a hockey or a baseball game. Like ball goes into the stands. You're just like, yeah, thanks. That's very much. Thank you very much. That would be awesome. Passed off there by Aaron Elser. Ooh, that is a tight set. Caden Schmidt is blocked there by Jonathan Girard. A big, big block by Girard there. Tough ball for Schmidt. I do love that he just took an absolute rip on it, but tough when the ball's in the middle of the court and Schmidt doesn't, or sorry, Girard doesn't have to do a whole lot of moving to go get that block. That deep. Now to serve. Laval trails by four. Can they make a comeback here? And that's a first step with the ace by Adi off the hands of Aaron Elser. And we've talked about that hard, low float serve of Adi. He's changed games with his before. Let's see if he can dig them out of the hole, cutting the lead down to three here for Trinity. Adi, once again. Putting that over at Aaron Elser. Much better pass this time. And Rempel into the block and out of bounds. Every time they've needed a side out today, they've gone to Henry Rempel and he's been able to score off the block, score over the block with the roll shot, the big swing. He's doing it all. Mm -hmm. As fans are starting to trickle in here with the Queens Gales up next, taking on the UBC Thunderbirds in the bronze medal match at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Good serve there by showing her to the attack line. Now Fultain on the right side. He's blocked by Corneal. Corneal, we've seen his offense here today, but we see his ability to get outside quickly, close that block, and send it back to the Laval side on Fultain. Showing her, who has had his best game of the tournament here this afternoon, with a serve into the net. St. Dolban is going to go back to serve for Laval here. See what he can do with three offensive weapons in the front for him. Going that Schmidt. Aaron Elser all the way to the outside. Schmidt will get it back. Rolled over. Thrown down by Feltang. A joust at the net. Back on the Spartan side. DeGrieff to the sea ball. Rempel. He's dug up in the back. St. Dolban tracks that down. Lozier rolls it over. Thrown down. Kept alive. Now Faltain, a big swing down the line. Aaron Elser, what a dig. Now Caden Schmidt, one-on-one. -on -one, shut down by Juhal. Tracked up by Ryan, but it's out of bounds. And that one goes to Naval. What a play by the Hoosier. Awesome rally there, both sides of the floor. Some big one-handed digs. And Laval, maybe that's the spark they need to get themselves going down three. Almost midway through this fourth set. St. Aubain. Here's that Schmidt past the attack line. He'll get it back. That's too tight, and he can't get to it. Whoa. They called that. Looked like, did it touch the hands of it, the block and out of bounds? Yeah, it looks like it touched the hand of Jonathan Jihal as it was going through. Caden Schmidt didn't even get a touch on it. That's a tough break for Laval. Yeah. And Jihal didn't even, even contest it at first, so. No. That's that's just a momentum killer right there. Let's see if they can get it back, though. Ryan with a heavy serve goes long. And Lozier back, and he's done a great job from the service line tonight. 
Lose ye. Right at Aaron Elser. Good pass. And now Caden on the right side down the line. We've seen balance from the Spartans here today. They, I know Schmidt had to lead the way for them yesterday with Rumble behind, but we've seen so much offense from everybody today that if you're Laval, you really don't know where that ball's going to go. And Trinity doing a good job of staying calm. Schmidt with the changeup this time, handled by Minville. Now, pipe, Lozier. Ho, 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 and Roxborough was there, but into the stance. Awesome swing by Lozier. Does such a good job of cutting the ball out of the back row in those hard, hard angles. Great swing. Girard back to serve. And that one ends into the net. As time is running out here for the Rougeau. Yeah, this four-point lead has seemed to stuck here over this last stretch for Trinity Western as Cornell's going to go back to serve for the Spartans. Cornell into the net. You could see as soon as he did that, the one hit his hands. And just, yep, just a little bit off there for Cornell. We've seen a lot of back-to-back -back miss serves, teams trading points back and forth. <laughs> see if someone could clean it up and go on a run. Fortin. They could use a big serve from him there, as that is a perfect pass by Elser. Outside to DeGrief. Great swing by DeGrief on the right side. He's quietly had himself quite the little match. Been excellent from the service line. And right now, defensively for that eye, things just not happening. And you can see it on the sidelines, conversations between Gino Busso and Rémi Cadoré. And Fortin blows that one out of bounds, 17 to 12. Henry Rumble back to serve for Trinity Western. Let's see, he's mixed it up all night. Let's see what he's going to do here. Rempel pulls that one long. Oh, almost hits our cameraman in the back. He dived out of the way. Heads up play by the cameraman to get out of the way there. Looking like an athlete himself. Apparently he was actually a cameraman in a ring that in the MMA fight that was going on here in uh, Kingston last night. He was telling me all about it this morning. As Minville puts that one in, great pass by the Spartans. Schmidt's going to dump it over. Chance here for Laval. Outside, Lozier off the block, and that's down. Big block by Trinity Western. And no surprise there, Schoner again on the block. Closing to the outside, turning those hands in. He's been excellent all night long in the front row for Trinity Western. To grief out of Victoria puts it in off speed Lozier will pick it up Saint Obey just dumps it over easily handled by the Spartans now Rempel on the outside oh that's blocked by Lozier Rempel we're gonna get it back a little bit more inside this time he puts it wide a couple good swings there by Rempel unfortunately just out the side and here we're all the way around to Adi again for Laval last time up was able to come away with one ace. Let's see if he can maybe string a couple together here. Down four. Adi. Another good serve. Handcuffs Aaron Elser. And there it is, Adi, with that tough, tough float. Has been hard to handle, not just tonight, but all weekend long. Let's see if he can continue here and put some more pressure on the Spartans. Aaron Elser has been aced five times this afternoon here, Ben. Caden Schmidt steps in and takes that one, showing her. Puts that one off the block and out of bounds. And his confidence has grown so much throughout this match. He's, he's been awesome, a lot of fun to watch. He's doing a little bit of everything. We've seen him with a couple of digs. I believe he had the big, the first bump kill dig of the match for the Spartans as well in the back row. So he's really putting it all on for his team here. Showing her. Chips off the tape. St. Aubain in system. Girard, no doubt. Great run there by Girard in the middle. He is, he is again, we've, we've talked a lot about Schoener, but all four of these middles have been excellent today for both these teams. Offensively, some big, timely blocks. 
and Laval trails three. Now that is still struggling mightily. You would never know, Laval only has three kills here in this fourth set, hitting a minus 167. How are they even alive? That's tough, especially you're, you're right, Everett, being only down four with statistics like that. And Ryan, that's another pass way off the net. And to the pipe, to Grief. And you know what, if you ask me, I think there's something wrong with Max Lozier. If you look at the way he's moving, he's not getting as low as he was. You can kind of see he's somewhat faint. There's a little bit of a limp in his step. There's, Lozier has played a lot of minutes, and throughout the entire year, he's taken a huge role for this Rougeal team, but he's standing very straight up. And that is, that's a straight-up half jump there by Lozier as well. Ryan. Oh, just wide. He, Ryan wanted that one, looking to find that back corner. Unfortunately, just a little bit wide. Yeah, no, the more I watch him, there's no doubt in my mind that Max Lozier is hurting somewhere, somewhere in the lower body. Just the way he's moving, I'm wondering if there's something not up with his back. Outside now to Rempel, off the block, St. Aubin almost there. And Henry Rempel, when we need a side out, or sorry, when Trinity needs a side out, he goes and gets it, and that forces Laval to take their second and final timeout of this fourth set as they trail 22-17 to the Trinity Western Spartans. This to me is just, uh, I mean, like it's a last ditch effort. You gotta do it, but it's, it's one last time out for the team for the for this season for wow. Gino Brusso. Obviously, if you want to do the the Disney Disney comeback, you got to say something motivating in the in the timeout as well too. One hundred percent. And we have had lots of championships going on this weekend. We've got the women's gold medal. National Hockey Championship coming Sunday at 8 p.m. Brought to you by CBC Sports. And here we come back out of this second Laval timeout here in the fourth set. We've got Caden Schmidt back to serve, one of the spearheads here for Trinity Western. Needing three points here to take home the consolation final championship Schmidt that one's why have I not dead yet they're still within four they need some exceptional play here down the stretch but it's not out of the realm of possibility no. you don't even need to go into the multiverse for it no and now we see Tua see come back into the front court for Laval. You talked about this earlier, Everett, that he can be a, a bit of a blocking spark for them, and let's see if he can do that here as they are down four. He's going to be expected to go one-on-one -on -one with Henry Rempel. In the pipe now to Schmidt. Makes no mistake, 23-18. Trinity Western just plays with that cool, calm confidence that they've had all year long. And they now push within two of taking this consolation final Corneal with the floater at Belgium oh, and that's going to be into the stands and it's going to bring us match point Trinity Western Corneal's going to go back to serve that was a good tough float by him let's see if he can repeat it here to take home this fifth place game Belgian Hall, that's a flat pass outside. Minville, he's shut down by Corey Shonaher. And the Trinity Western Spartans clinch fifth place here at the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championship presented by Marcasa. Yeah, that was a great match we had here there. And then you really saw Trinity Western pull away in the third set. They, they took that set by a score of 25-16 and really never looked back at the, they took this fifth, fourth set, 25-18. Laval put up a great fight here. They had a great overall tournament. You could see some of the long faces there for Laval. They they know for some of them that's potentially their last game. 
You see them leave it all on the floor, but a big congratulations to Trinity Western in this consolation championship game as they take it three sets to one over Laval. And you're seeing big hugs all around for Henry Rempel on the Spartan side, just on the right-hand side of your screen there is the fourth year will most likely be done. I'm assuming that Rempel is going to be the uh, MVP of this game, and we can ask him about uh, about that. Yeah, he was excellent all game long, and the other one that maybe potentially we're going to see up there is Cor Corey Schoner yeah. as well, who had probably his game of the tournament he really here did. today. Yeah. Doing a little bit of everything for for these Spartans. Yeah, 9 for 12 in the middle. Hit a 667. Just awesome, and and the amount of blocks he had to or hands on balls was was just phenomenal. And they, they don't have him down as a service ace here, but he 100% got an ace. Absolutely. And let's not forget about his big dig that went over the bump kill over the net. But we yep. are going to... Yep. Sorry, yep. we'll... Uh, We'll see you back soon here. We're going to, well, the Queen's Gales are going to take on the UBC Thunderbirds in the bronze medal match uh, in about an hour's time, I would assume. Yeah, that one starts at 4 p.m. First, we'll do a, a quick little interview with the player of the match from the Trinity Western Spartans as they are announced here. Take, they like to take their sweet time with these, uh, these ceremonies here. So... And uh, we will be back shortly with the player of the game uh, interview.
Hey guys, we are here with Henry Rample of the Trinity Western Spartans after they defeated the Laval Rouge all 3-1 to grab fifth place. And Hank, obviously the fifth place match is not the match you guys wanted to be in. We know that when you put that on that jersey, you guys expect to be in that final, but how thankful are you that you were able to close it out with a win? It's been, it's amazing. I, I couldn't want anything more. I mean, that's why we play, right? We play the sport because we love it. We don't play because we want to be in that final match, but at the same time, like, being in this fifth place game, it's all the same. Like, I love it all the same, so can't complain. We'll talk about your future in a second, but first of all, looking at this game, you were scoring so much with off-speed stuff. And now, real quick, like, that to me, that's not something that you had in your repertoire when you came into Trinity. A lot of power, not much finesse, but you showed a completely different side of yourself. You really leveled up over this past year. What made you see that, you know, you could just kind of go 50% chizzy, roll shot, and get a lot of points? I don't know. I guess as you get older, you just, <laughs> you learn more, you see more. And uh, I guess I've been watching a lot more video, and uh, it works. So why not? Why not add to the tool belt? That was your, your last match as a Spartan. What did it mean? How does it meant for you to be a Spartan o o over these years? I would just say overall the programs, I refer to things as like being beast. And I just think the program's beast. Like it's gotten me here. It's made me into a man, came in a boy, and I'm so thankful. Trinity's everything. Looking forward for you. Uh, are we expecting to see you in a, in a pro jersey, Team Canada? What's what's next? Uh, we'll see about Team Canada, but definitely a pro jersey. Uh, I haven't released it yet, but I'm about to sign a pro contract, so we'll see uh, how that goes. Can you, can you, can you tell us now? Uh, no, we'll wait. We'll wait. Okay. Can, you can send me a, a DM on Instagram once you sign that, that contract, and we'll chat about it. Well, Hank, congratulations on a fantastic se a season. You really leveled up. Congratulations on the fifth place in the MVP. Best of luck with everything moving forward, and congratulations on a fantastic U Sports career. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. That is it here for the fifth place match from the Queens uh, from Queens University. We will be back with the bronze medal match between the Queens Gales and the UBC Thunderbirds at 4 p.m. Eastern time here from the 2024 U Sports Men Volleyball National Championships presented by Mikasa. Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats du Sport à Radio-Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fedler. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'année U-Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sport. Et par Mikasa, l'étoile menton du volleyball. Le V200W, ballon officiel de U Sport. And by Mikasa, maker of volleyball's hottest star, the V200W. Official volleyball of U Sports.